Salesforce manual sharing, account teams, opportunity teams, and case teams. Welcome as we dive deeper into Salesforce record level sharing. Today we're diving into manually sharing a record, and we're also diving into the team functionality, the account teams, the opportunity teams, and the case teams. And they have their own nuances, plus they can be supercharged with some flows or triggers. And I'm gonna demonstrate an example of that. So we're now on sharing set 3A, manual and teams. And we're talking about record level sharing and visibility. So if we had, if an object represented get an office where you needed access into the office with your profiles and permission sets, then the record sh sharing is the equivalent of being able to get into the file cabinet and being able to control access to particular records. So what we're here to talk about is record level security after the user already has their file level security, their structural security. As we've been going through the sharing mechanism, some of the sharing mechanisms are out of the box and some are specified by configuration or code. Some are affected by the license types. The ones we're talking about today all require access to the share table, which are the Salesforce internal licenses and some of the community licenses. So the ways we're talking about today are gonna to be manual sharing and teams, the account teams, the opportunity teams, and the case teams. Manual sharing is where there is a particular owner of a record and that owner has the ability to grant access to a specific other user. To be able to do that, you need to be the record owner, the user in a role above the owner in the hierarchy, if the hierarchies are enabled, and any user with full access or administrator. A key thing to note is once the administrator changes, once the ownership changes, then all previous manual shares are removed. So in the detail pane, there's gonna be sharing and a share. And we're gonna take a look at this. Here's a runway object that I've used in previous examples. And what we're gonna do is if we go to the right, we can hit the share button. Let me make it a little bigger. And if I hit sharing, then I have the ability to search for a particular user. Let's choose Paul the pilot. And I can choose to give Paul read-only access. And I hit save. So now a record share for Paul was created. And Paul now has the ability to view the record. So we can see that how, as admin, I get to see the share screen that Paul the pilot, Runway Z group, and I'm the user. So this allows me to see the level of access, but I have just granted a manual share to Paul. Now we're gonna move forward to account teams. You need to set up account teams. You need to enable them, enable the teams enabled, and add it to the page layouts. And here, you can add to the account layout, and then you have the team roles. And then you add particular team members. So let's take a look at this. So if I navigate in the setup menu to account team, after I've enabled account teams, and then I choose account teams, then I see the team roles. I'm gonna click here and see which roles are defined for the account team. These are some default settings in my sandbox. We have account manager, channel manager, executive sponsor. You can add or remove team roles and manage these. So these are the different roles that are gonna have access on the team. Now the next thing you can do is an individual user can set up their own team, what's called the default team. So they would come here, go to settings, go to advanced user information and scroll down and you'll find that they have the default account team. So right now I have Paul the pilot as the default account team member. So if I hit add, I can go ahead and choose a user and choose them and define what access they're gonna get on the account, opportunity, case, and team role. This is because of the, the these are the cascading objects linked to account. So. I already have Paul set up, Paul the pilot, 
as an account team member. What I'm going to now do is go to an account record. So here I again go into accounts and I'm going to choose uh, Acme. And right now I've added the related list. So if I scroll down, I have account teams. And what I can do with one button is this is Steve who has a default account team with Paul and with one button press, I now have Paul the pilot added on to my account team. This way, Paul now has gained access to be able to view the account and help me work on the account by being on the account team. Now I can also add individual team members and search for them here. So this is a powerful mechanism for me to be able to manually add a default team. You know, I can maintain my own default team. I can hit one button and add the team members. And then, and if there is something unique about this account where I need additional team members, this is where I can manage those team members here. Now I'm gonna demonstrate how I could use code in order to create a new team member to this account team. So what I'm gonna do is go to the, this is code, but this code could be replicated either as a button, it could be replicated as apex trigger, or it could even be implemented as a flow. But so this way, I'm gonna show you a way in which I can programmatically add another team member. So I'm gonna go into code. I have this little bit of code right here, and I just need to know a user. So I'm gonna execute, and I'm gonna look for Manny. So here is Manny's user ID. And the other thing I just need is the Salesforce ID of this account. And what I'm gonna do with these five lines of code is I am going to add Manny as an account manager to this team. And so with, with a little bit of code, five lines of code, I'm gonna execute. Now I'm gonna go back to the account team and I'm gonna refresh. And now you'll see that Manny has been added. So with four lines of code, if you've selected the account, selected the user, you can automatically through code, add them to the account team. This could also be a record triggered flow that when the account is created, based on some a query, it can select a user and automatically add them to the account team. The reason this is powerful is we'll be talking about programmatic sharing coming up, but this has the advantage that once you've added them, the user gets to see it and maintain it. So this is an administrate, this gives the user administrative capability to see who's been added, to see Manny, and even have the ability to edit or delete it later. So if you want to use the out-of-the-box account teams, but you want to automate it, you can add it with an automation, with a little bit of lines of code or a little or a flow, you can be adding team members and then give the users the ability to see those team members and potentially administrate it. So this really empowers account teams by supercharging it with automations and using the out-of-the-box screens as the admin screens. So we showed how to add the default account team. We saw how we can then show it on the team. And there is the little bit of code to manage the team members. Now we're going to move to opportunity teams. So you need to enable team selling and then go to advanced user details and you can set up the default opportunity team in addition to your default account team. And I'll demonstrate that. So here I have my advanced user details. I've also added Paul to the default opportunity team. And we can go take a look. So here I am on global media, 400 widgets. This is an opportunity. And I see that there are no team members and I can come right here and I can add the default team. And now Paul has been there. Now, based on this with one button press, I could have added the account team. Oh, and so you can see add 
So you can add opportunity team members, add the account team, add the default team, or remove all members. So this is a really nice set of administrative screens that are out of the box for managing the team membership. And as I showed you, you can supercharge this by setting up automations, either flows or triggers to add team members. And then that way you can have your flows add them. And then you can have the admin, the, the users can actually see it on the screen and then administer it. Now case teams are a little bit different. You can actually create, first you create a case team role. You define the roles and I define one as case manager. And then once you do that, you create an, these predefined case teams. In accounts teams, they were related. You had your default account team for a single user, Steve's account team that he used. And then the opportunity, Steve's opportunity team. But these case teams are not user specific. These are general teams, predefined general case teams. And you can actually build the case teams. And in case assignment, you can have it automatically assign the team. And so what we have the ability is to create Paul the pilot. We have a case team and we can assign these teams. And let's take a look at this with cases. So here's the case team roles. And I created one called case manager. And we have the concept of predefined case teams. These are not specific to a particular user. These are overall team one, team two. You could have a, a significant number of these teams. I've added Paul the pilot. And then you can use and, and have this added to a case. So taking a look at this case, I've added the page, the, the component to the page layout, and I can add a team and it's allowing me to choose. I only have team one right now, but I hit save. And now I've assigned team one to this case, which will give all the team members access to the case so they can work the case. And we have the admin screen, or I can hit a particular person, Manny. So I'm also gonna grant Manny access. So we have Manny the manager is the case manager and team one. So manual sharing is really straightforward. Wasn't in the original release of Salesforce Lightning. They've since added, added it. And so it allows the users, Steve, to take records I own and grant single manual shares to particular individuals. Um, and as soon as my ownership change, that goes away. The next sharing is case teams, or excuse me, account teams, uh, case teams, and opportunity teams. They seem very similar, but they have their own nuances. The account teams, I have my own default team and with a button press, those members can join an account of mine. I showed you how we can automate that with a simple Apex, a little bit of Apex, throw it on a flow, and it gives the user the screens to see those account members at it. We move to the opportunity teams and they grow a little differently. You have very similar functionality, but you also have the ability to bring in the account team, swing in the case teams, and I think it even leads to some of the um, you know, team member splits. So case teams grows by being children of the account. Now what's different about um, the case teams, it, you know, the opportunity teams are childhood of the account. What's different about the case teams is you can create generic case teams that then can be applied to specific cases. So add your automations and it really will supercharge your needs and it gives you these built-in screens. I hope this was helpful. And keep on teaming up. Join me again, same bad time, same bad channel. Subscribe to Steve Tech Arc on stevetecharc.com and the YouTube channel. Have a great day.